Hello everyone. Thank you so much for taking your time to attend this webinar. In this webinar, we will be covering how you can successfully log in for the first time and we will also help you to get started with Soho Mail. The agenda for today is first login, resetting your password, configuring multi-factor authentication, changing the modes of multi-factor authentication and how to configure account recovery. Additional to that, we will be also covering setting up your inbox, mailbox appearance, compose settings, advanced mailbox options, advanced settings, and Zoho Mail mobile app. For you to log in into your account for the first time, you would have received your username and password to your official email address, and the one time password would have also been received in your mobile number. To log into your account, Type email.nic.in in your browser. Provide your complete email address and choose next. Enter the password provided in your official email address or your registered mobile number and click sign in. Now you will be asked to create a new password of your preference. Create a strong password and reconfirm the password to set it for your account. Click Set Password. Now you will be asked to log into your account again using the newly created password. Provide your complete email address. Click Next and provide the password that you created now. Click Sign In. Now it's time to configure MFA for your account. MFA is multi factor authentication which is an extra level of screening in addition to your password. And it is recommended to download the Zoho OneAuth app for you to do this. It works the same way as Kavach, the app you've been using previously. Click Enable MFA in OneAuth. Follow these instructions to configure MFA for your account. Download and install the Zoho OneAuth app in your mobile go to Play Store if you're using an Android mobile and App Store if you're using an iOS mobile. After installing the app, click Open. Click Sign In. Read and accept the privacy policy and select Accept. Now sign into your account using your complete email address and password. Once you sign into your account, click on Keep Using Password. Now you will be listed with the different modes of MFA in which Receive a Push Notification will be selected by default. Click on Enable MFA. Now MFA will be enabled for your account. Go back to the browser and select I've Enabled MFA. Once you configure MFA for your account, you will be asked to generate backup codes for your account. And these backup codes will be useful when you do not have access to the Zoho OneAuth application to authenticate your sign-in. Download this backup code and keep it safe in your computer. Now click on continue to sign-in. Once you sign-in, you will be taken to the workplace dashboard and here you can access Zoho Mail application. Now let us see how you can change the MFA mode for your account. You can choose QR code or time-based OTP other than the push notification as well. In addition to that, you can also enable fingerprint or face ID authorization for your account. To change the mode, go to Zoho OneAuth app in your mobile device and click on the pencil icon. Click the button beside preferred sign-in mode and choose scan a QR code and click done. You can enable or disable fingerprint authorization for your account. Click save. Now let's try logging into our account. Provide your complete email address and password. 
and click on sign in. Now you have to scan this QR code to complete authorization. Click on open QR scanner in your Zoho OneAuth application and scan this QR code. Once you successfully scan the QR code, you will be allowed to sign in to your account. To change the mode to TOTP, click on the button beside preferred sign in mode and select enter a TOTP and click done. Now when you try to sign into your account, you will be asked to enter the TOTP sent to your mobile device. Let's sign in. Now provide the TOTP sent to your mobile device and select verify. Now that we saw how to change your MFA mode, let's move on to seeing how you can configure recovery mobile number and recovery email address. For that, click on the avatar on the top and choose my account. On the left pane, under profile, you can scroll down to find my email address and my mobile number. So if you have forgotten your password, you can configure an email address and mobile number for recovery purposes, which can be used to reset your password. To add your email address, click on add email address and type out the email address. Make sure it is not your email alias. Once you add your email address, an OTP will be sent to your email address, which you can type it out here to verify. Same goes for mobile number. Click on add mobile number and type out your mobile number here and click on add. You will be asked for the OTP which you would have received in your mobile number. Type out the OTP to verify your mobile number. Once that is done, your email address and mobile number added for your recovery purposes will be added successfully. Now that we saw how you can set up your recovery email address and mobile number, let's move into the next topic, setting up your mailbox, under which we will be covering mailbox views, email viewing options, tags and flags, creating and sorting folders, expanding and collapsing folders. Let's see how you can do it. So this is the UI. You have the list of mails here. On the left side, you will find the list of folders. On the leftmost side, you will find the suite of apps. If you wish to do any customizations, on the right side, you will find the settings option. All right. So now, if you wish to create a folder, you have to click on the plus icon here and you can create a folder of your choice. For example, project two. You can create a folder of your choice and you can save it. Once you save it, you will find the newly created folder on the bottom to the list of folders that's already been created. If you wish to relocate the folder, then you just have to drag and drop the folder in the specific place wherever you have preferred. Let me just drag and drop it. Yeah, can you see the red line moving along? That is where you're going to drop the folder. All right, so now we saw how you can create and sort your folder. Now let's see how you can expand and collapse your folders. For example, can you see the list of folders here? If you wish to only see the heading, you just have to click on the heading folders and the list of folders will collapse inside the heading. You can also do the same for views, tags, and streams, and saved search. If you wish to see the list under it, you just have to click back the heading for you to see the list. And then going to opening your mails, you just have to go to the settings and there you have land me in option available for you. So you have the list of apps, mail, calendar, task, notes, contacts, bookmarks, and streams. So when you log in, if you wish to log into your mail account first, you can click on mail and you can also further choose inbox or unread. So what happens here is when I click on unread, then when I log in, I will be visiting the mails which I am yet to attend to first and the rest of the emails is something will be behind. And you can also choose inbox. So now when I log in, this will be the first page I visit. Now I'm going to choose to open a mail. 
So can you see the mail is opening in a new tab? You can also customize this by going to the settings option and going to mail view options. There you will find vertical preview, horizontal preview, new tab and new window. So what happens here is since when we clicked a new mail, it opened in a new tab. If you wish to open it in a new window, you can go with new window option or if you wish to open it in the vertical or horizontal preview in the same page, then you can also choose these options. Now coming back, I think this particular mail is very important to me and I wish to indicate the same in one or the other way. So how can I do that is you can choose to flag this particular mail by choosing the flag icon here. Not just that, you can also customize the type of flag you wish to give to this particular mail. Just have to double tap or right click on the particular flag and you can flag this mail as information, important or follow up. You can also choose to clear the flag once you want to remove it. Addition to this, if you wish to tag this particular mail, you can also do that by selecting this mail and you have a tag as option on the top. Clicking on that, you can give the tag which you have already created or if you wish to create a new tag, just type out the name here and you will have the option to create. For example, project 2. See, you have the option create here. You can create it and you can also give it a new color. That's it. Now you are able to tag this mail with your preferred name. We saw tags, flags. So what are these used for is this will help you to narrow down the mails that you wish to specifically search. You can use the views option on the top. Clicking on views, you will be allowed to search for the unread emails. When you click on that, the mails that are yet to be attended is something you can narrow down and attend to those mails. Or if you wish to narrow down the mails that has specific flags or tags, you can also do that. You have flagged option here. You can choose the specific flag such as information, etc. And you can narrow down the mails. And you also have tags from which you can narrow down. I gave the tag as project 2 for this mail. I'm going to click on that and narrow down the mail. So views helps you to narrow down the mails of specific tags or flags and you can also narrow down the 100 emails for you to attend to them as soon as possible. So under setting up your mailbox, we already saw mailbox views, email viewing option, tags and flags, creating and sorting folders and finally we saw expanding and collapsing folders. Let's move on to the next topic. Mailbox appearance. In this topic, we are going to cover how you can change the default view as compact, classic and super compact view. Following that, we will be covering conversation view, night mode, theme, language settings and fonts. So shall we see how we can do it? Moving back into the UI, can you see the list of mails here? So if I wish to change the way these mails are being listed for me, then I can go to change view option on the top right side and I can choose classic, compact and super compact. Let me show you how it differs. Clicking on classic, I'm helped to see the mails in a more elaborate manner and super compact will allow me to see the mails in a more constrained manner. So what happens is I'll be able to see more number of mails in just one go if I choose the super compact. And you also have compact view which is an intermediate version of these two types. And next you have the conversation mode available for you. Let me turn that on. So what happens here is, let's imagine you have sent a mail to your colleague and the person has replied you back. So there is a to and fro conversation between you and that person. So if you wish to revisit that conversation, then you can turn on this conversation mode and when I click on the first mail, I can see the mail that I have sent and also the mails the person has replied to me in the same thread. I don't have to see them as individual mails and search for them. I can simply revisit all the conversation that I had with that person in the same thread. 
So that's how conversation mode works for you. If you wish to turn that off, click on the same button and turn off the conversation. Great. So now let's see how you can change the theme and color. And scrolling down, you will find appearances and theme. Here, you can toggle between the light and dark mode. And you also have the appearance change to light and dark. You also can change the theme color to blue, yellow, green and red. So now let's see how you can change the font. You can go into the avatar to change the font. You can choose workplace settings that's available under the avatar and go to display and appearance and you can change the font right. You also have the option to change the theme right here. So if you wish to change the UI language, you can go into the settings and under system, you will find display language available for you. Clicking on the drop down, you can choose Hindi if that is your preferred language and select it. Once you refresh the browser, you will be able to see that the UI language changes to Hindi. Let me quickly change this back. Great. So now we saw how you can change the default view, how to turn on and turn off the conversation view, toggling between night and light mode, changing theme, language settings and font. The next topic is going to be Compose settings, under which we will be covering Composer view options, Compose an email, Inserting attachments, Scheduling an email, Saving a draft, Inserting signatures and Undo send. So shall we see how we can do it? Moving back, to compose a new email, click on New Mail button and let's compose a simple email. So I have pasted the person to whoever I want to send the mail here and press enter. Great. So now I wish to insert an attachment. For that, I'm going to click on this pin icon. You will also have and you may also find an attach button on the top of the preferences from where you can bring in the attachment. Clicking on this, you will be allowed to bring in the attachment from your desktop, from my attachments, docs, and other cloud services. For now, let me bring one from the desktop. Click on attach. So now I have inserted an attachment and now I wish to change this signature. For you to insert a signature or bring in a new signature, you have to click on the insert signature option from the preferences and you can choose to insert the signature of your choice from the signature that's already been created by you. I will be showing you how you can create a new signature, but here is where you will find insert signature option. Now it's time to send the mail. So if you wish to send the mail right now, you can click on the drop down here and send right now option is available for you. But if you feel like this mail has to be sent after an hour or to a person in a different time zone, then you can choose to select the send later option on the top. Clicking on that, you will have default options available for you. You can also customize it with this option called custom date and time. Click on that. You will be allowed to choose the date, the time and also the time zone. When clicking on schedule and send, this mail will be saved in the outbox and when the time arrives, this mail will be sent automatically. For now, let's choose to send this right now. Before I do this, let me just quickly discuss a user case. Let's say I have clicked on the send button, but I feel something about the mail was wrong, the person who I sent it to or the data that the particular mail contained and I wish to change it. So what you can do in these scenarios is you can enable a feature called undo send. What happens when I enable that? is even after clicking on the send right now button I will have a breathing space up to 30 seconds depending on my specification and I will be allowed to undo the send and for that you have to go into the settings and there you have undo interval available for you 
Can you see I have specified 5 here? You can also specify up to 30 seconds. For now, let's fix with 5 and enable this option. And now when I click on send right now, I will be able to undo the send within 5 seconds. When I click on undo, this mail will be brought back to the draft section and I'll be able to redraft the mail and send it. All right. So we covered how you can insert signatures, insert attachments, how to compose an email and send later and send right now option. We also covered how you can undo send. Great. So let's move into the next topic. Advanced mailbox options under which we will be covering search options, archive emails, forward an email as attachment, drag and drop attachments and print an email. So let's search for the mail that I'm wishing to visit. So let me search a content. So here I'm listed with different fields. I'm going to choose contains. So the mail contains Zoho mail, this wordings in it. And I'm listed with mails, which contains this particular wording. And I can narrow down this mail according to this, or I also have options to narrow down in accordance with from who it was sent to who I have sent it the folder the mail resides, the subject, the email content, attachment name, the type, the date it was sent, and also the actions that I have did to it, the priority, the flag I've given. All of these options or fields can be used to narrow down the mails of your choice. You can use multiple conditions here to narrow down a particular mail or particular set of mails. Once you search for a mail or set of emails, if you wish to save this search for later use, you can also do that. Let me click on save the search option. Going to specify as Soho mail. Going to save it. So once that is done, you will find this saved search under the saved search heading. Clicking on that. Saved search heading. Can you see the Zoho mail reflecting here? And this is the saved search we created. So anytime I want to narrow down the same set of emails that matches the condition, I can simply click on this and those emails will be narrowed down back again. So now we saw how you can search for a mail and save that search. Now let's see how you can archive the emails that you no longer want to reside in the inbox. And for that, you can select the mail and you have an option on the top saying archive. Clicking on that, this mail will be moved to the archive folder and if you wish to revisit that email, click on view archived. And the mails you have archived will be available in this archived field. Next we are going to see how to drag and drop your attachments while drafting a new mail. Let's click on new mail and I'm going to bring the attachment from a sent folder. All right. So I see a attachment here and I wish to drag and drop this attachment to the compose window. Yes. So now that I dragged and dropped, I can draft this mail and I can choose to send it. I can also add emails as attachments and also send those mails. For that, you simply have to select the email and click on the three dots here. And I will be allowed to forward as inline or forward as attachment. You can also select multiple emails and choose to send them by choosing forward multiple emails. So can you see the emails have been forwarded in the format of EML and I will be allowed to give it a content and send it. Great. So finally, we will be seeing printing an email in this topic and for that, Let's move into inbox and open a mail. Great. So you have an option print mail here. Clicking on the same. You'll be allowed to print it in the format that you wish to. And you can click on print. In this topic, we already covered search options, archive emails, forward an email as attachment, drag and drop attachments, and printing an email. The next topic is going to be advanced settings under which we will be covering filters, folders, 
out of office and signature. Let's dive into it. On the right side, you have settings and there we are going to search for filters. So if you wish to automatically move certain emails to a specific folder, you can use filters. Let me show you how it is used. I'm going to choose incoming email filters under which I'm going to choose new filter. I'm going to give it a name as new project and any of these conditions can be chosen. Under conditions, I'm going to choose subject contains new project. So what happens here is the incoming emails, if at all it contains the subject, the wordings as new project, then I'm going to specify a consequent action for the same, which is going to be move to folder as new project. So I have already created a folder called new project. If the incoming mails has its subject as new, new project, then it will be moved to a folder called new project. You also can set other actions such as flagging, tagging and forwarding the email, snoozing, setting a reminder, setting an auto response, deletion of emails and also moving it to work drive. You can set different conditions in accordance with from, to, subject, the BCC, content, priority and the attachment type. So if you feel uh, okay that incoming emails will uh, go through this filter and it will do the consequent action. What about the existing mails? Then you can enable this option saying run existing emails through this filter and you can choose the folder for which you want to run this filter for and then save it. All right, so now we saw filters. Let's move on to the next topic, folders. So under folders, you can create a folder right from here and you can see the information about the folders that you have and the size of the folders. You can also see the number of emails it contains. You can choose to turn on and turn off the notification for those folders right from here. You also have an option to turn on and turn off the conversation mode for those folders. Next, let's see how you can create a signature for you to insert it in your Compose window. Search for signature. And here you have some signatures which has already been created. And if you wish to create a new one, click on the plus icon on the top. And here you can give it a name of your choice and you can compose your signature. You can also choose to change its alignment, change its type, the font, and also choose to bring an image, the HTMLs. You can just formulate the signature just the way you want it to be and save it. Now the signature is added successfully. If you wish to bring in the signature while you are composing a new mail, all that you have to do is click on the insert signature option, which we already saw and bring in the signature. Last of all, we are going to see out of office. Okay. So you can set up your subject name, the content, and you can also choose the duration for which it has to function and the days you wish it to function. If you wish to, you know, disable some of the days, you can also do that right from here by turning on and turning off this option. And moving forth, you also have an option to customize it with these options. Reply only once during the entire vacation period. When a person is sending you an email, no matter how many times the person has sent you an email in your absence period, only one out of office message will be sent to the person. And you have reply to consecutive emails from the same sender every specific days. So I'm going to specify seven days here. No matter how many emails the, a particular person is sending me, every seven days once, a out of office message will be sent to this person. The last option suggests reply to the same sender even for emails received on the same day. So for every email a person is going to send me in my absent period, a out of office message will be sent back to the person. And on the bottom, you can choose to enable this out of office for specific people. 
which could be for everyone, for my contact alone or for non-contact people. And you can choose to save it. So under this topic, we covered filters, folders, out of office and signature. So the final topic for today is going to be how you can make use of the mobile app of Zoho Mail. If you're using an Android mobile, go to Google Play. If you're using an iOS device, then go to App Store. Search for Zoho Mail and install it in your mobile device. Once that is done, sign in to your account by clicking on sign in, giving in your email address and your password and make sure to authenticate your MFA as well. So once you sign into your account, this is how the UI looks like. You will see the list of mails here and you can toggle between the folders by clicking on the drop down here on the top. And if you click on these three lines here, you will, you will see this column where you can click on contacts, calendar, notes and settings. On the bottom, you will find streams, folders, shared with me, tags, views and saved search. From here as well, you can choose to visit the folder that you wish to attend. And on the top right, you will have a switch to sign out from your account from just one device. In mobile device, you can choose to add multiple accounts and use it. And on the top right side, you will have a compose section available. Clicking on that, you can compose your mail and send it. So now let's visit some of the basic functions that you can do right from your mobile device. That's compose and sending mails, managing received emails, managing sent emails and adding signature. To compose your email, click on the compose button that I already showed you and paste the person who you want to send the mail to and compose the mail with the content and the, sub and the subject and click on the send button here. You can choose to bring in any attachment by clicking on the pin icon and bring in any attachment from your cloud services or your mobile device and clicking on three dots on the top right, you will be listed with options to add CC or BCC, send later option, inserting templates, adding a priority and asking for receipt. To manage your emails, click on the email and on the top you have share, delete, download and reply option. If you click on the three buttons on the top, then you will be allowed to reply all, forward, mark it as unread, delete, move, archive this email, add a flag, add a tag, mark it as spam and print the email. To add your signatures, go to the settings and there choose the account for which you want to add the signature to, scroll down to the signature section and choose desktop signature in the signature choice. Once that is done, you will click on the sync icon for the desktop signature to sync to your mobile app. In your IIS mobile, same way, go to the settings, choose your account, scroll down to the signature section and choose use desktop signature. You will be allowed to use the desktop signature in your mobile app as well. Moving to the advanced option, you can move emails to folders, use left or right swipe actions set an out of office and you can also turn on the sender or folder based notifications. Let's see how you can do it. For you to move the emails to a new folder, you simply have to select the emails you wish to move to a new folder and on the top you will find the move to folder option. Click on that and you can choose the folder of your choice to move these emails. Next you have the left or right swipe actions. So what this suggests is, when you receive an email or send an email, by just pressing on that email, you can left or right swipe it. When you left swipe it, you will be allowed to archive, move or delete the email. When you right swipe it, you will be allowed to mark the email as read or unread email. For this, you have to enable the left or right swipe action. Next, to set up an out of office message right from your mobile app. You have to go to the settings, choose the user account for which you want to set the out of office message for and 
select the start date, end date, the time and compose the message with the subject and here again you have an option to customize the auto auto respond for every specific number of days and for who you want to enable this function for for everyone non contact or my contacts once you set up the out of office message you can save it and it will be functional lastly we are going to cover how you can enable notifications for specific sender or folder for this go to your settings choose the user account for which you want to enable this option and turn on this particular switch once you do that you will be allowed to specify the sender or folder specific for which you want to turn on the notification you can find more details on these topics in the help links provided in this slide and you can also visit our videos that we have provided in youtube if you have further questions you can post your queries to this email id thank you so much